Welcome back to PyMonk Basics. In this video, we'll talk a little bit more about collisions. In particular, we'll talk about collision filtering. Collision filtering is a way for PyMonk to ignore collisions. So I'm starting off this simulation with three balls of different colors with two surfaces. I'll run that one more time to show you. Three balls of different color, two surfaces. I trust that you guys do know how to code this at this point, since we've talked about this in previous videos. Uh, just a quick recap, we have created a class called ball, and we've done everything we need to to add it to the PyMonk space properly. Um, the only thing that'll be different between the instances of the balls right now is the exposition of the balls and the color. And then we've created a class called platform, which does the same thing, but with platform, coded the PyMonk part uh, properly, the differences between the, the multiple instances are the Y values and again, the color. Here's our game function. Here's where we've defined all the instances of the ball and platform, just like we've done in the past. And here's our game loop. And we've drawn the objects onto the game loop. So again, just to run this, we get this. So feel free to pause the video if in case you ever need to get a review of this. Uh, you could also see my other videos. So let's talk about how we can ignore collisions. So one of the ways you can do it is the way we've previously done it, which is using collision handlers, setting collision types for each object, and just using either begin or pre-solve, and then setting that function, the collision handler function that we pass to it, the one with the space arbiter data arguments, as false. And so if we return false in that function, then the collision does not happen. We can still do that in this case, However, if we're only trying to ignore the collision, setting a whole collision handler just to set the begin or pre-solve function to false is a waste of time and a waste of uh, data and processing power because the amount of processing power it takes to generate a collision handler is a lot because we get all this information about the collision out of it, right? Kinetic energy, we get the, uh, the ability to do stuff with it, right? Within the collision handler function. We don't need any of that if we're just trying to ignore collisions. So PyMonk gives us two ways of doing this. We have groups and we have categories. So let's talk about groups. Groups are very simple. For groups, we set each object to be in a particular group, which we denote with an integer. So one, two, three, anything besides zero. And any object in that group will not interact with each other. So if I set two objects to be in group one and they look like they're colliding, they'll just go straight through each other. So let's try that. So in the ball class over here, I'm going to set up the group as a keyword to the init method so I can have it be different for each object. And to add this group number to the shape, the way we do this is self.shape.filter self.shape.filter. So before we did self.shape.collision type, this time we're doing self.shape.filter. So we have pymonk.shape filter. So the thing we need to send to this filter attribute is within pymonk.shape filter. And group is going to be our first keyword that we can put in. So I can just put in a number, but just to be specific, I'm going to say group equals, and we'll have these be group. Actually, I'll say group equals group because that'll be the group that we pull in to the ball class. So down here where I've created these instances, I'm going to give it a group number. So I'll say all of these balls I want to be a part of group number one so they won't interact with each other if we had them try to interact with each other. And I also want the platforms to be in the same group so that way they go straight through the platforms. So let's go ahead and do the same thing for the platform group and then self.shape.group, sorry, dot filter equals pymonk dot shape filter group equals, and then I'll say group. So now I can set this group number from this game uh, function. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to set all of it to one, so no collision should happen because all of these objects are in the same group. And if I go ahead and run this, we see that the balls go straight through. What if I want the balls to only bounce on this orange platform here, not the black platform? 
We could do that too. I just need to either not set the group, which would set it at zero, or I can set it to be zero or just any other number that's not one because one is the group where the balls in the first platform are. So let's run this. Straight through this one because they're a part of the same group. Different group, the collisions actually happen. Great. So that's groups. Groups are useful when you can split what needs to collide and what doesn't need to collide in different groups. However, what if the collision dynamics as to what should collide and what should not collide with each other is more complicated than that? For instance, if you're playing, let's say, a two-person shooter game and you don't want the bullets from each person's guns to collide with each other and you also don't want the bullets of your own gun to collide with yourself, let's say if it hit off the wall or something, but you do want it to collide with the other player, um, but you also want every bullet to collide with all the walls, so on and so forth, there may not be a way to put everything in the right groups to make that happen because it's just too complex as to what should collide with some things but not some other things and so on. So that's when we use categories. Categories are a little bit more difficult to understand than groups because categories require what's called bit masking. And if you're not familiar with bit masking, I'm going to start off on an explanation of bit masking here. And um, if you are familiar with bit masking, go ahead and skip this part of the video because this might be too obvious to you. But anyway, let's talk about bit masking. So I have a little bit of an Excel spreadsheet here that might help us understand bit masking. Um, so in each category, uh, we will talk about what each objects are. So maybe I should say objects here instead of category. And our objects here we have, let's go ahead and run this one more time. We have a red ball, a green ball, a blue ball. Then we have a black platform and an orange platform. So let's go red ball, green ball. And I'm just doing this so we can keep it organized as to what we're doing. Red ball, green ball, blue ball, I said. And then we have a, what do we have? A black platform and an orange platform. So the idea of bit masking is that every object gets its own bit. Actually, every category gets its own bit. In this case, we're going to have every object be a part of a category. So bits are ones and zeros. And so in this case, we have five objects, and we're going to create five different categories for them. So the first object for red will have as the first bit, so the bit off to the right, be one and the rest be zero. So this is what it would look like. So we have five bits here, five numbers that could either be zero and one, and zero, 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 because we're saying that the red ball is not part of those categories. It's only part of the first bit category. So the green ball we want only to be a part of the second bit category, so we would say 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. And then so on, because each thing is getting its own category. It is very, very possible and very common to have each object be a part of multiple categories, but as of now, we're not going to do that. We're going to keep each object as its own category. Now, since this is written in binary, the corresponding number for the category is not exactly what you would expect. It's the numeric representation of the binary number that we've put in here. And so, for instance, this first one is just 1. The second one is 2 because binary is about base 2, while normal numbers are about base 10. So the first place here is 2 to the 0th, which is 1. The second place here is 2 to the 1, which is 2. The third place here is 2 to the 0, 1, 2, which is 4 and so on, 8 and 16. So a little review of binary math there. This is important because this corresponding number for the category is what we're going to set the category at. So we'll set the red ball at category 1, green ball category 2, blue ball category 4, and so on. And that's misleading because people think that they could set the red ball at category 1, the green ball category 2, and they could set the blue ball at category 3, but by doing that, they're not setting it at category 3. They're setting it at bit 00011, right? So let me do that properly so Excel can pop it up. And that would be a category of 3. But this is not the third bit. This would be that it's in category 1 and 2. So that's kind of where the confusion is and where you have to be careful to make sure you're doing this in binary. 
Now we have to decide what do we want these balls to be able to collide with. So this is our decision. I'm going to say I want the red ball to only be able to collide with the blue ball. And let's say the orange platform. Okay, I want the green ball to be able to collide with the blue ball. Not the red ball and the orange platform as well. Um, and again, I'm just giving an example here. So we're going to see this in action. Let's have the blue ball be able to collide with, I guess, the orange platform. Uh, the black platform. And the two balls. So green ball and the red ball. Notice there's a little bit of repetitiveness in this, right? We've said that the red ball is able to collide with the blue ball, and we also have to say that the, red, the blue ball is able to collide with the red ball. If we don't do that, then PyMonk is going to take the first point of difference. So if one thing is not allowed to collide with the other thing, but the other one is allowed to collide with it, the collision will not happen. So both things need to be allowed to collide with each other for the collision to happen. Having said that, if we don't put anything for the black platform or the orange platform, PyMonk assumes it's able to collide with everything. And so since we've told the red ball and the green ball they cannot collide with the black platform, and since PyMonk, as long as one object of the two in the collision is not allowed to collide with it, will not collide with the black platform. And so we don't have to put anything here. And we can make these assume that they're able to collide with everything because we've already handled that situation in this case. So again, that's just a way to kind of check yourself and make sure you don't make mistakes by not allowing something to collide back with the other object when you wanted it to. Um, so now we have to change this instruction into a bit. And this is called the bit mask. The first bit is the orange, which this one is allowed to collide with. So I give it a one, one meaning allowed to collide with. The next one is black, which I'm saying you're not allowed to collide with. The next one is blue, which I'm saying you're not, uh, you are allowed to collide with, excuse me, with the next bit over. The next bit over is green, so I'm saying you're not allowed to collide with. And then itself, should I be able to collide with myself? Now, if there are other things in the category, other objects of the first category, category one, then this would be relevant. But in this case, it's, it's not relevant because we only have one instance of every object that's in that category. Uh, so I can keep it as colliding with itself or not, and nothing will change. So now let's do this for every single one of these. Now let's do it for the other balls. So we have blue ball, orange platform. So orange platform is one. Then we have black platform, which is a zero. The blue ball, which is a one. Then the green ball, which is itself. So I'll go a one here. And then the red ball, which is not allowed to collide with. So I'm going to say zero here. Okay. Now the blue ball. Let's do the blue ball. It's allowed to collide with everything, I guess, besides itself or even itself. So I could just do one, 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 one here. And then these are all assumed one, 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 excuse me, one, 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 one here. So now let's look at the corresponding number for what's allowed. So using our binary math here, this is zero, one, two, three, four. So two to the fourth is 16. This one is zero, one, two. So two to two is two is four. So that's 20 plus 1, 21. Binary math again, 16, 21, but instead of 21, it's 22. And confirm this for yourself that you're able to get this. Now, a little trick here, you go when you have a bunch of ones, you just go on to the next bit over, which would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2 to the 5th would be 32, but 1 minus that. So 31 here. So this spreadsheet here i do recommend going through this either in your head or on paper or on excel every time you're doing this just to kind of keep yourself organized by knowing what category numbers i should put things in and what masks i should give them so now let's show you how to actually do this in script so instead of in the ball class instead of bringing in a group we'll call it a category and a mask and now in the shape filter function Instead of group, we'll say categories. So the keyword here is categories because we could be a part of multiple categories. And we'll say equals category, which is the keyword we've defined in the init. And then mask equals mask. Now for platforms, we 
going back to the Excel spreadsheet, we've decided not to give it anything. If we don't give it anything, it does an automatic one, 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 one. And so we don't have to give it a mask, but we should give it a category, which we have decided to give it. So same thing, instead of group, we'll say cat, to gory, and then categories equals category. Awesome. Now, this first argument after the color here in ball one, which is our leftmost ball based on our X position, which is our red ball. Our red ball should be a category of one and a mask of, I'm sorry for flipping back and forth so much, but a mask of 21. And then we do the same thing for the other ones. So this blue ball, category of two and a mask of, I forgot, 22. The third ball, which is the blue ball. Sorry, this one was the green ball, ball two. The third one is the blue ball, and that's a category of, careful here, four. And we've come up with that by looking at the corresponding number for the bit that the category takes up, which is the third bit. And it has a mask of 31. And just so we don't have to keep flipping back and forth, the next ones have a category of 8 and 16. So mask of 31. And category here of 8. And a category here of 16. So now the conditions that we've set up here should apply in our simulation. So let's see what these conditions are. We've decided that the red ball and the green ball can only collide with the orange platform, which is the lower one. And so those should go straight through the black platform, while this blue ball here on the right should get hit by that platform. So let's run this and see if we get that. So these two have gone through, and this one had collided. Now let's test the balls as they hit each other. Uh, what should happen there? Well, both of these can collide with the blue ball, but neither can collide with each other. And the blue ball can collide with them, so we're good there. So to do that, we should probably change the velocities of the balls. And unfortunately, I've hard-coded the velocity here. So I'm going to add a last argument here called velocity. And then instead of hard-coding the velocity, we are going to bring it in with uh, the init. And so for these balls, we'll have to set a velocity for them. So ball one is the leftmost one. I want to set a left velocity of, let's say, 100, 0, Zero is in no y velocity, so we'll be going only in the x direction here. Let's have the second ball have a really slow velocity of like 10, 0, because I want to show that this first ball is going to overtake it and not collide with it. And let's have the last ball just stay still, so no velocity. Let's run this and see what happens. So this red ball does not collide with the green one, but it does collide with the blue one, just like we predicted based off our categories. And the same thing would happen for the green one to hit the blue one. And just to show that, we'll have the blue ball stay still, green ball go faster, and the green ball hits the blue ball.